My name is Sean Taylor. I'm with the uh, Washington, D.C. FBI Headquarters Office. I've been an FBI Special Agent for approximately 18 years. I met an agent named uh, Special Agent Melanie Franklin, uh, who then became Melanie Kersey, but she was a, a church member. Uh, we went to church together and she began telling me about the FBI. I think I was already an enlisted man in the Army at the time, but she really fascinated my interests. But, uh, I wanted to continue my career in the Army, and, uh, but it always stayed in the back of my mind. If I weren't an agent, I would still uh, be a military officer. Uh, I was flying helicopters in the military until 2002. To, to prepare myself for the challenge of being an FBI agent, I've always been a competitive shooter. And then, uh, prior to coming in the FBI, I was a, a military enlistment, a military officer, so I've always been in shape. So I maintain that same curriculum of working out to prepare for that. And from the other standpoint of what can you do to be an FBI agent, the FBI is going to train you in everything you need to know. So basically you need to demonstrate the aptitude to, to progress to that level. I like to tell people helping people. And what I mean by that is uh, it's not just about arresting people. I've done that, murders, you know, mortgage fraud, bank fraud, anything you want to mention that capacity. But one of my greatest memories is after Hurricane Island was destroyed during the hurricane, I was sent down there with, a, if you will, a task force of uh, tactical helicopter pilots, uh, tactical personnel, IT specialists, electronic specialists, and our job was to resp restore communications on the island of Puerto Rico, St. Thomas, St. Croix. And after we completed that mission, we actually took the time to hook up with an NGO, and we got some food and water and distributed 55,000 pounds of food and water. That is my greatest memory of being an FBI agent, which had nothing to do really do, do with the FBI, only that the FBI wanted to help out. We had full support of the FBI leadership. Fantastic memory, fantastic opportunity, fantastic way to help the community. What have I learned professionally and personally? I've learned that uh, I have fortitude. I've learned that uh, I can't be broken. I've learned that I like to tell people, you may be smarter than me, but you'll never outwork me. And so I've learned to continue going on, no matter how tired I, are, how tired I am, uh, no matter what the circumstances, always complete what has been assigned. I think that we have no personality, which I would say is completely false. Um, FBI personnel are just like everybody you see in your neighborhood, in your family. You know, we like to laugh, we like to have fun. Um, basically, we're your friends, we're your neighbors. There's nothing different about us, only that we have a different occupation. Um, I haven't really encountered any myths as far as being a black FBI agent. Um, I would say that uh, it would probably go forward to the question before that, that uh, you know, an FBI agent is an FBI agent, I guess regardless of uh, what nationality you are. Where would I like to serve? I would like to say probably League at Berlin. Uh, when I was a military officer, I uh, spent three years in Germany. I like German, uh, Germany. I like the people. I have friends over there on the German counterterrorist team, the GSG-9. That would give me a chance to spend some more time with them, see friends. It's also a good place to base and see the rest of Europe, along with, I believe that we're in a global situation. So we need to help everybody. Everybody needs to help us. You know, we're, uh, we're dealing with the threat of terrorism everywhere. And without everybody's assistance from every country, it's really not going to be as effective. What I would like them to know uh, about being an agent is that, number one, you can do it. Number two, I would say, express your interest to someone and you will find that someone will take an interest in you. People in the FBI want to help. If you're proud of your career, you will find that people want to talk about it. People want to help. And if you can get into a child and spark their, their imagination, their desire to be something, no different than Special Agent Melanie Kersey with me, it will stick with you. So I would tell them, stay away from the drugs, stay away from crime, stay away from any type of thing of a negative capacity because that, that image that you have of an FBI person, once you're that person, you need to continue with that. So the FBI integrates you and takes all your positiveness and this is what people see. So come in uh, you know, uh, as best that you can, if you will. How can we inspire people to become FBI agents? I would like to say that it probably falls on people like myself and everybody else who's an African-American agent in the FBI. I think that it's one of these occupations that you don't see a lot of people. So if you do see someone, I would encourage you to reach out. But it's really, I think, up to us to show that we're willing to talk about it. We're willing to assist you. We're willing to provide the information that you need to help you get into the Bureau. Because again, there's just so few of us. And I think that if you show someone some motivation, they will show it back to you. And you got to put some personal energy into people to help them uh, proceed. 
So basically, how do I balance my life? Uh, I would like to say self-improvement, I would say I'm constantly reading, I'm constantly doing something. There are a lot of opportunities in the FBI that you can get involved, whether it be uh, from IT, where I'm currently at, to being a helicopter pilot, being an airplane pilot, to so many different interests of behavioral analysis unit. Uh, I'm just thinking about some of the things I used to do, crisis management unit. There are so many opportunities you can get to continuously develop yourself that uh, I'm constantly seizing upon those. In addition to the other aspect, balancing your family and your career, I think that it's kind of like the term of multitasking. You're not really multitasking. What you're doing is you're stopping and starting very quickly, which gives the image of multitasking. It's the same like with your career. You're, you're creating a balance, but what you're really doing is surging. So as an example, I get up at 5 o'clock in the morning to get to work. I get home at 7.30. Now, when I get home from work, I am surging with my kids. I immediately go from work to lacrosse practice to soccer practice. Everything is a surge. Spend a particular amount of time with somebody, go back to work. It's just compartmented blocks of time that you're doing realistically. But uh, I think I've learned from my father that you have to put the time to develop everything that you're working on, whether it be your family, whether it's your children, whether it's your career. And, you know, as my father said, you can rest when you die. One place I'd like to visit is Mongolia. So uh, I've seen a couple of specials on National Geographic, if you will. I think it's interesting. I like uh, how they do the bird hunting, how they're living in that. I believe it's the yetz, that's some form of a tent structure that they have, and uh, how they're basically surviving in a, an old world culture, uh, which to us looks uh, somewhat uh, prehistoric, if you will. In my spare time, you can catch me uh, flying airplanes. So uh, from the military days of being a helicopter pilot, I'm now a, um, a licensed private pilot airplane. And so I really enjoy that. I found that I'm someone who has to keep my mind active all the time. As my wife will tell you, I don't do very good sitting down. And aviation provides, uh, uh, it provides me concern. I always want to do the best I can. Obviously, I don't want to kill myself. And so I am constantly studying and it keeps my mind very active. I'm currently reading a book called All Secure. It's by a guy named Tom Satterley. He was a Delta Force operator, United States military um, the Department of Defense. Uh, and it basically talks about his, uh, his career in Delta Force, but the book is really about how his career has affected him and how he went through PTSD and how he's now coming out of it, but he didn't know at the time that he was suffering from that. And so I'm a veteran, not suffering uh, like Tom was, but uh, I care about that. And I care that he's trying to do something about it, and I want to support that book and support uh, different veteran activities. Uh, what's on my musical playlist? I'd say I'm pretty uh, eclectic. Uh, you might find Andrea Bocelli, you might find Two Chains. Uh, you might find Willie Nelson, Luther Vandross, Anita Baker. I'm from Detroit uh, originally. Uh, so just an eclectic group. I like all kind of music. As I've learned in the military from dealing with all kind of people, I think uh, music is kind of an insight as to where those people came from, who you are. It's, uh, it's like a cultural definition sometimes. A quote that I like to share with my fellow agents is, and uh, I paraphrase it, but essentially it's by Teddy Roosevelt. And it says, uh, it is not the critic it is not the strong man that stumbles. It is the man on the battlefield that matters. And what that really means is trust in your opinion. Don't listen to what other people say who have a negative perspective. You control your own destiny. You control your own life. And uh, that's essentially what it means to me. My quote for US citizens, I would say a more simple quote. And it's just a matter of, I think how it goes. If you stop trying, once you stop trying, then your destiny is. That means that you have a chance to still make a difference. Uh, if you're still alive and breathing, you can still make a difference. If you stop doing anything, whether it's an effort in work or effort in relationships, then it essentially is going to get no better. It's going to stay where it's at. You always have an opportunity to make things better. I would say take a chance. Dream big, but don't just be a dreamer. So have a dream with some substance. That essentially means find out something that you want to do. And something that I really learned in the Army that I try to tell people all the time, you reverse plan it. You essentially, you look at yourself as you just, you're successful from whatever you want to be, and you back up as to how you achieve that. That has worked so many times for me. I have never seen an instance where reverse planning has not worked. I, it's a simple shared secret that will, that will get you to your career goals.